Hey everyone, I'm Alicia from A Music Blog, yeah, and I'm very excited to be catching up with Stina from Honey Blood today. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Well, we're currently on this North American tour with 250 Forge, so just tell our readers at home and our viewers, how's it treating you so far? Um, it's been really good, but it's been very cold. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Um, you know, we come from a pretty uh, cold place as it is, but I don't think any of us were really prepared for for the, the freeze <laughs> that's happening here just now. I saw some photographs of you in New York, and it looked like you were having such a great time. I saw this like photo journal, and um, so I was just curious. When you're on the road, what are some things that you like to embark in or do for fun? Um, that that day was good because they had a ping pong table, <laughs> so me and Kat had like extreme ping pong because uh, normal ping pong is just pretty boring. <laughs> so we were just trying to hit each other with ping pong <laughs> ball. Um, yeah, like. It's, it's just <coughs> initially like always really exciting especially like we haven't been to the states like in so long and just the energy is always up so uh and, you know this is the first time i've ever been to, i've ever been to canada so kind of stuff like that just keeps you going yeah um but we end up just playing stupid games in the <laughs> van and like that just that usual usual kind of like banter and you get to know like the people that you're traveling <laughs> with so well um <laughs> Sometimes too you know, too, too well. well you, know, <laughs> you spend so much time with them that um, you know we we have like little in jokes now and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, it, it's uh, you have to get into like the, the the zone with with that kind of thing. I read one thing that you like to do uh, for those long drives. You like just blasting music on your way down to shows. Yeah. So what are some bands as of right now that have been on your playlist or that you've been having in rotation for driving? Um, I mean, we all try and like put things on that are like brand new. Um, to play to each other, we don't even know what they are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sometimes when I'm like sitting alone in the back of the van, I actually my guilty pleasure is Carly Simon. <laughs> I, li I sit and just listen to Carly Simon. <laughs> don't know if anyone else knows that, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's always like kind of like bands that that we all kind of grew up listening to. Um, one of uh, like me and Cat are like massive like. Nirvana fans and stuff like nice. that. So like that's always like a classic like to turn up really <laughs> loud. Um I think the one we did last year was Blink 182 is the one All that right. we were blaring out the van like behind you know and <laughs> we weren't it wasn't that dangerous. That was bad I should have said that. Um but yeah, d there's there's so much stuff. I mean you're driving for like you know up to like 10 hours a day. You just have to keep it fresh and keep it going. Yeah. We're all music lovers, so we just constantly have stuff on and the guys who are in our crew as well they've just got like the best music taste ever um so every everything they put on we're all like that's amazing what's that <laughs> tell us who this band are um so yeah we've got like little lists to take home with us awesome <laughs> Well, you had released your debut record last year, and I know before this interview we were kind of discussing how you're going to be playing a couple of new songs, but I was just wondering, when can fans actually expect to hear our audio files for these new these new tracks? Uh, well, we released a new single a week ago, mm -hmm. maybe maybe more than a week ago now. Um, so that's kind of like what we were working on at uh, December time. I mean, we've been on tour since the album came out pretty much like <laughs> constantly, so... Um, once we're done this tour, we're going to do some festivals and uh, in between that time, try and write the next album. So <laughs> we'll write the next album. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, maybe later in the year, there'll be something more substantial. But yeah, we just we just released a, a single um, called No Big Deal, which, yeah, I'm going to play that one tonight, um, which we haven't played yet. I think we played it in New York um, and, uh, and a new single that's going to come out later on as well. So exciting yeah <laughs> <laughs> well <the coughs> excuse me the last time we spoke with you you told us that super rat is about a total prick who deserves to have this song written about them <laughs> and i that's absolutely so <laughs> i absolutely loved reading that because it's kind of you know that's the sense you get out of it so i was just um listening of course to more tracks on the record and here in all draked up you share when mother nature planned for age she must have forgot about you <laughs> you are just so like oh. your lyricism i absolutely it's it's just so good so I was wondering. I'm so here, mean. It's, but it's it's. I love um, picking out because when I listen to music, the first thing I usually go to the lyrics right away. So I was just wondering, as far as insults go, written within your music, do you have like a particular favorite in there that you've like <laughs> slipped in or? Um, yeah, I like all dragged up because it's kind of like really brutal. I think it's probably more brutal than Super Rat. Super Rat, <laughs> I, th I think, is a bit of a joke song. But um, yeah, so probably. 
probably that. Yeah, the line that you, yeah. you mentioned is one of my favorite ones. I'm trying to think. Um, they're all pretty bad. I'm just really good at insulting people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, if you if you can't do it, you know, while you're screaming and playing guitar, guitar then when can you do it? True. You know, like, I, I generally am actually a really nice person. <laughs> Like because of the guitar, you can completely get yeah. by with it. <laughs> I just say, you know, like, you should never have to bottle up how you feel when you play music. And, and um, a lot of the time, it's, it's it's like happy, angry. Happy, angry. Happy, angry. That should be a new genre. Happy, <laughs> angry. <laughs> well, I was reading a couple of other pieces, and I read that one of your desires is to encourage more girls to play music. So I was just wondering where this aspiration of yours actually came from. Um, I think it stems from the fact that you know, like I didn't, I didn't have, I had an abscess of, um, an abscess? <laughs> absent. <laughs> <laughs> that was absent uh, for me. I mean, like when I was at school, um, I hung about with boys who played music mm -hmm. and I had very few friends who were girls who played music and they, we all started a band together. Um, and the boys like really just either maybe felt threatened by this or whatever. I mean, we did win Battle of, Battle of the Bands, so I can <laughs> understand why. Um, but uh, yeah, they used to like totally like bully us. And um, it made me like discover, you know, like when I started listening to Riot Girl, and I was like, what? Like I, I see myself as being equal in that respect as a music lover and playing guitar. I, I don't really see what the difference is. And they, that like genre gave me like, totally channeled that and it was just like something clicked inside and now when I see um, the friends that I was in a band with and they gave up and I was like why did you give up oh because it was not acceptable for you to play guitar because I wanted to grow my nails long you know stuff like that it's like no that shouldn't <laughs> happen yeah. Um, and yeah and there's like a lot of stuff at the moment in where I live where a lot of other girls that you know I know are a part of that you know got TYCI in Glasgow that Lauren uh, from churches runs and stuff like that and it's I think that kind of stuff is so important because if I had not found uh, Riot Girl and that's the kind of music I am into if I didn't know that that existed I would probably would have stopped and I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have written my album and played shows so um, yeah I think it's it's so important when it came to actually creating that record, were there any female artists you looked up to or you were thinking I'd love to take nuances from that and put in my music? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, um, oops. It's all right. You can go for it. <laughs> Just go for it. Um, yeah, I mean, like, my the first time I ever heard The Breeders, that was, that was like, it for me. So... Um, I mean, I heard them. It was at a, I was at a friend's house and, um, and they came on and it was, it was Pod that came on. And that album is recorded in my hometown, which makes it even more like <laughs> destiny. Um, but uh, yeah, like when I listened to that and I, I must have been really young, that, that like was hook, line and sinker for me as to what that I think the kind of perfect sound is. Um, that sounds really bad. But <laughs> that to me, that's that's what I aspire to have is is that sound, and that is the kind of like biggest influence on Honey Blood is uh, sonically, you know, um, my vocals and things like that. I just I just wish that I sang like Kim Deal, but um, and then you've got like and when I got a bit older um, and I came into my, like my later teens, like PG Harvey was just the biggest inspiration to me. Um, you know, her dynamic and structure and songwriting and and telling a story is is really important. So, yeah, those two probably shaped Honey Blood the most, um, and the kind of right girl like kind of mindset and and kind of noisiness. Yeah. Um, so all that kind of wrapped into <laughs> one, really. Well, last year you had actually covered Liz Fair. So I was wondering, yeah, are you a big yeah, fan yeah. of hers, or is that something you just picked at random? Or? Um, it was it was a song chosen by Rookie, so they chose it. I think they choose a. a a theme song and then they get their band that they want to okay. do to to cover it but yeah i love liz fair yeah, I, I love her too she's like so kick-ass like <laughs> <laughs> she's a, she's just a badass yeah, listen, to, listen yeah. to her lyrics and that's that's kind of why i wanted to bring her up because i see in the lyricism it's like blunt but so meaningful and i sh feel like there's a very common ground between you two when totally, it comes to that totally i think yeah. she just speaks her mind and i'm all for that absolutely so, um, <laughs> yeah it was a really fun song to play and like the fact that it, we played it so differently um, and, you know, there was no drums 
anyway so we just like added them in um uh yeah it was it was really good to like kind of morph it and and we got to work with um, melissa off Demar as well on that song so that that was a bit of a game changer <laughs> for me she's like pretty much uh you know she's like a massive inspiration to me in general like you know so uh yeah that was that was pretty a pretty good day <laughs> But since every artist at one point is a startup or they're just, you know, starting out, are there any, um, or what's some advice that you would give to fans of yours, female, male, just people who love Honey Blood, who want to pursue a career in music? Um, <laughs> don't give up. <laughs> like, I think a lot of people that I, I knew that were younger that I thought were, like, the best musicians that I had ever met, they, they stopped. And um, it's heartbreaking because their songs, I've, listen to their songs and thought this this is so good um so just keep at it and uh, record everything you do i think um keeping a kind of catalog of every song you've ever written is is so important um i mean i i started doing it but um i lost a lot of stuff and uh even thinking about that kind of like breaks my heart because that that is essentially you know you're writing your own path like you're your past there is like kind of collected and especially if you write from the heart and the songs mean something to you you can see the progression um so yeah they're they're probably the the main things that i would say um keep doing it and <laughs> record everything awesome well thank you for sharing that with everyone no at worries. home and that wraps everything up and it was just such a pleasure catching up with thank you today you. thank you so much for your time and for everyone at home thank you for watching our interview with honey blood and remember for all exclusive interviews with your favorite bands go to www.amusicblogia.com bye